Hi there, this is Alana. You are listening to the Praying Christian Women's Podcast with me and Jamie. How's it going, Jamie? It's going well. Well, we are excited. We're recording part two of our behind the scenes. So if you missed part one, that was where we covered some of our ask me anything questions that you guys sent in. I I guess we need to change it to ask us anything, huh? Right. Yeah. Ask us anything. Ask us anything. (laughs) And then what? Um, We talked actually a lot about just Alaska and the unique spiritual and prayer needs here in Alaska. I hope that that got you thinking about ways that you can be praying specifically for your kind of local region as well. And now we're going to dive into part two of our behind the scenes, which I'm really excited about. Um, Should we start with a word of prayer? Yeah, let's pray. Awesome. God, thank you for bringing us back here and just giving us this opportunity to talk more about the podcast and where you have brought us from and where you're taking us. We just pray for each person listening that you would bless them today, that you would inspire all of us just to glorify you in whatever's going on around us right now and just to see your hand working in every situation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I had an idea for a just for fun. What is um, it? How has, because we're getting close to two years now where we started the Praying Christian Women podcast. Before that, we had the Prevailing Prayer podcast, which is no longer up, but I think people can get the episodes if they join our Patreon. Is that right? Yeah. I, I think all of the episodes are up we had on all the episodes. Yes. Um, and what's that? Patreon.com slash Praying Christian Women. Um, so all that to say, we've been doing this for a while, and we are getting close to praying Christian women's two-year launch anniversary. I guess you could call it. That's so, right. in the past, let's say just two years, since that's how long we've been doing praying Christian women, how has your prayer life changed? Oh, it's been. I I think with anything, just drawing attention to it on a regular basis changes things. So, I mean, when people talk about setting goals, um, if you have a goal and you write it down and you have it somewhere where you're always looking at it, just being aware of it, you gravitate Mm -hmm. toward it just by nature. And so the podcast for me has drawn my attention to prayer. It's made me think about kind of I think there were two different ways that we came up with episodes. Most of the episodes mm-hmm. I think came out of our own questions about prayer. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But even in our own prayer partnership that happened before, like leading up to creating the first podcast, um, we would discover new questions that we had about prayer just through praying and through like talking about it, talking about prayer, talking about how God was working mm-hmm. in our lives. Mm-hmm. But, but then also in, you know, after we have gotten so many episodes, I'll start thinking, well, what, what questions might other women have, or we'll get questions yeah. from other women, right. from coffee break mm-hmm. questions. Mm-hmm. And then we'll start to think about it and feel like we have to do a little research into it before talking about it. So it's been amazing. And, you know, the confession component, which we talked about mm-hmm. and did live on the air last time. Yes. We should start doing that more regularly. Yeah. Do I think live. so too. But um, that has really transformed my prayer life. And ooh, as we're recording, I'm realizing I missed my Take 10 Tuesday window today. It is Tuesday. Oh, no. Yeah, I'll have to hop on late. I've never missed a Tuesday, but I have had to hop on late. And my schedule, we were supposed to record way sooner, and then my schedule changed. So, Do um, you want to pause and go do Take 10 and then come back? Is that okay with you? That'd be fine with me. Oh, okay. Well, we could do that. And, but just before I, I pause us, um, take 10 Tuesday is in our praying Christian women community where I'll go in and just go live and just take like, usually I try to do 10 minutes. Usually I'm more long winded and it turns into a take 20, Tuesday. <laughs> but it's just a time. Typically it's at 2 PM Pacific or 2 PM my time, which is 3 PM Pacific. And it's just a time to pray And that, just that standing appointment has kept me accountable for, you know, just having an appointment to pray. So I love that. Yeah. Always that the podcast has, and there've been many more, but yeah. All right. I'll pause and, and then, uh, we will come back and ask you the same question. 
You know, it would be fun is I don't know. I don't think there's an easy way to do it right now, but like you and I are on zoom. It'd be fun if we could just push a button and like we could do take 10 Tuesday and have it be on the air and stuff. But that would be cool. Or we could record take 10 Tuesday and then put it up, but that would well, be being live. Let's just do it live. I will. Yeah. I'll talk to you. When okay. You're done. All right. I'll be back. And we're back. It's like a time warp. It is like a time warp. Hey, do you notice anything different about me? Is it your shirt? Did no, you I washed my hair. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> well, I've had my window shut because they've been doing like, you know, people are outdoors mowing lawns, all this like summery thing, and it's getting kind of stuffy. So I was like, I was getting kind of gross. <laughs> so while you were praying, I was being, you know, even more spiritual in taking a shower. <laughs> you were cleansing yourself from your sins. <laughs> from my sweat, at least. <laughs> well, I have the, like, I have a light, you know, you know, you have one too, right? The, yes, yes. And the, so I've got like the, the big light and it's warm. And mm -hmm. even though I moved the pot, the, the, I call it the podcast studio and my kids laugh because it's like a closet. The closet. It literally is the closet. Right? It is literally the closet. And Wait, do you guys still have a closet for like your clothes and stuff? Or what yeah. are you doing? Okay. Okay. We do. It's weird. It's very weird. This is like, it's, I don't even know what this is supposed to be. It's like, it's sort of a closet. And then there's this tiny closet. Like we call it the Harry Potter closet. We've got two it's Harry Potter It's the guest room for people you don't like all that much. Right. It's where we put the kids. No, in you couldn't bed. put a bed in there. Right. I mean, I know you had a crib in there once, but oh, I don't think this, you did a, yeah. a bed. Yeah, this was our daughter's room for a while with her crib and stuff, but it's yeah. so tiny. You couldn't fit a real yeah. bed in it. No, I didn't but, think you could. But off of this closet is a tiny door that go. I mean, a tiny door, like it's like four feet tall and it goes uh -huh. into kind of like an attic-y little thing mm -hmm. that's also mm -hmm. small. It's weird. It's I think you should start podcasting in there. <laughs> you could be like in your little itty bitty chair. My and acoustics would be really good. I could, it would be like I'm Alice in Wonderland because I would be huge and like the-, you the would. Well, do you know what? Until I got my stand-up desk, I actually, when I would sit and write, I sat on a preschool chair. Um, well, it was I'm sitting better. on one now. Yeah, it was better ergonomically because honestly, in like a full-grown adult chair, my feet don't go flat to the floor. <laughs> yeah, I'm at, I'm actually at a children's school desk and a, uh -huh. children, and a children's mm -hmm. like toddler chair. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. I don't think I knew that. <laughs> yeah. Are you standing up right now? Yeah. Yeah. This is just my stand up desk. This is my yeah. pretty typical setup. That's mm -hmm. cool. Do you ever get tired of standing? Not really. I'm so used to it now. I prefer it. I mean, there are certain jobs, like if I have a really, really just menial, busy work task, I'll sometimes just take my laptop downstairs and watch TV and do it, you know, with the laptop on my lap. But in general, yeah, I'm really, really used to this setup and, and really prefer it. That's great. See, my confession of laziness earlier from the last episode, I'm like, <laughs> don't right. you get tired of standing? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I do need to do, though? I invest in pretty good shoes. I wear, mm -hmm. you know, good walking shoes in the house. Otherwise, yeah, I wouldn't want to stand like barefoot or something. I yeah. can't see that being comfortable. Okay, so where were we? We're talking about the podcast. We're talking so, about two years. Yeah. Oh, and it's while true. you were... Oh, go ahead. Okay. Okay. While well, you were being all like super spiritual, I actually came up with questions of my own. So I know that you've got questions and I've got questions for you too. So be nervous. Oh, and you know, I'm not good. At I know you the hate the on the spot. <laughs> so what was your, you had asked the just, for I asked question, and then how your prayer life has changed. Right. And you hadn't answered that two one. Years. Yes. So my prayer life has changed in that whenever I wash my hair, I feel really, really spiritual. And I feel so much more in touch with God than anybody who would be some like on Facebook. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and also we talked about how massages are spiritual. That's what right. were the other things that are spiritual? Like they're all about self -care. Oh yeah. That's yes. right. Well, yeah. Um, I have added a 360 degree porch to my bucket list as a result of this podcast. <laughs> that's for those of you who don't know, that's a callback to our just for fun episode <laughs> where, uh, what was it? Things that we would want in our like perfect in your room. perfect prayer room. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You want a barista. I want a masseuse. So there okay. we go. <laughs> and we will choose unsaved people so that our prayers for the unsaved can be 
uh, <laughs> effective for the, yeah, that was really out. That was yeah, in that, poor taste. Mm, mm, boom. Yeah, that was a bomb. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> That's right. Wouldn't that be cool? Okay. Um, so how my prayer life truly has changed in the past two years. I think I have gotten a lot more just kind of compassionate and gentle with myself and realizing that sometimes just sitting with God and my thoughts is awesome. I think I had in my mind that for prayer to be the most effective, it had to be like a hundred percent effort and a hundred percent focus. Mm-hmm. And now I'm okay. Like, sitting in my chair for half an hour, staring out the window and letting thoughts come and go. And when I pray with actual words, I'm praying in words. And when I'm just kind of sitting there with God and my thoughts, that's fine too. So I think I've kind of incorporated just a lot more of a relaxed, like, no, prayer isn't easy, but that doesn't mean that it always has to be hard. You know what I mean? That's a good quote. I like that. I really like that prayer. We can Instagram that one up. <laughs> isn't easy, but it doesn't, ha- it doesn't always have to be hard. I yeah. like that. That is so accurate. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, just taking maybe a more, I don't even want to say a relaxed approach to prayer because I'm afraid that that could be misconstrued to like, I mean, I'm not taking it seriously or something. And that's not what I mean, but just that it's okay to just kind of chill with God sometimes. And that's just as important as the very focused, very dedicated type of prayer that we talk about too. Yeah. Well, one other way that prayer has, that I've viewed prayer differently as a result of this podcast is I've really begun through some of our discussions to tear down the barrier between prayer your spiritual life and your physical life Mm -hmm. and really embrace the fact that prayer isn't just this spiritual thing that you do in a vacuum. It Mm -hmm. very much is intertwined with, with your physical reality and, and how Mm -hmm. you're doing physically. And I think it's, it's, and also beyond that, one of my very favorite things that we've done has to do with your motivational style and how, that mm-hmm. affects your prayer life. And I feel like that really gave me a lot of insight into how I'm motivated and not being afraid to take that barrier down and it that it doesn't de-spiritualize prayer mm-hmm. to try and understand how you operate as a human yeah. and use that to your advantage and, and tailor your prayers to what you're normally programmed to operate on. Mm -hmm. No, I I totally get that. Yeah. What was that episode called? Do you remember people want to go back to that one? Cause that was a cool one. I'm pretty sure it's called prayer and learning style and I can look really quick. Well, we had the learning style, but didn't we do the motivational style? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The the learning style was different. Okay. So we had prayer and learning style was 76. That was also a cool one. Okay. But 79 was prayer and motivational tendencies. Mm, the motivational tendencies. That was the one. Yeah. yeah episode so 79. Mm-hmm. I think for me also, like I, I really loved doing our COVID conversations. Yeah. It, just, it was a nice way to stay in touch. It was a nice way to, like I, w- I wasn't doing active writing during most of the quarantine. And so it was a nice way to feel like I still was showing up and doing something. <laughs> and it, I, I liked the more laid back side to it as well. I like that too. And I feel like that has, at least for me, it's kind of shaped my, I don't know, just going forward. I feel like it, it's made me feel more conversational. Yeah. More. We're a little more candid. Our, I've noticed our intros are longer. <laughs> <laughs> they are. There's a lot more. Are we, have we become the guys in the Muppets? Those old guys that the bicker hecklers. back? hecklers. Yeah. Now we don't bicker, but like heckling and like making jokes and stuff. That's, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't it. know. Anyway, but they always you know, did the has... introduction to the Muppet show, right? Oh, okay. You know what? I know the Muppets better from like the movies, like the Muppets Christmas Carol. Oh, and yeah. And then Muppet Babies and the hecklers weren't in Muppet Babies that I remember. <laughs> well, let's not get into Muppet Babies because I loved that show and they've totally Aww. butchered it. My kids found it on 
like Netflix or oh, Amazon do they do or, a something. Remake or something. Yeah, it's nothing like the old one. So Aww. anyway, I digress again. You do digress, but di- digression is fun. We have become more relaxed in our prayer lives and more relaxed in our podcasting style. <laughs> That's right. Um, all right. So that was my first question. Do you want to, do you want to shoot at one? Okay. Um, do you want me to make one up or just? No, because I know, you, no, it? I know you've got like a, maybe <laughs> if not every question, I know you had things that we were going to cover and now sure. I've got my like sneaky little questions for you. Okay. Well, I don't know. So I kind of feel like how we became podcast partners, like I just had more discussion points. So I feel like one of them was how we became podcast partners. I think we've covered that. Do you feel kind Mm -hmm, of like mm -hmm. we did? Yeah. Yeah. I think that we did a a behind the scenes a little while ago, similar to this, where we talked about that. Okay. So we kind of know that. And, but um, one of the things that's kind of interesting is, um, our individual strengths and how we utilize them in our ministry. And oh, I want to, I want to go and get the other side of that too, of what is a weakness. So what is, what do you feel like is okay. your biggest strength that you bring to really just ministry in general, but specifically the podcast. And then what would you say is a weakness that, that shows up sometimes in ministry work? So there's a really funny psych episode and I'm getting, I'm getting to your question. where. <laughs> Sean decides to run for mayor, but it's like, it's a hoax campaign, but his campaign manager, he's about to go on this TV interview and he says, don't answer the question they ask you, answer the question you wish they asked you. So I'm, I'm going to answer the question I wish you asked me. And that is what is Jamie's biggest strength and Alana's biggest weakness? (laughs) So I would say, yeah, I love your shocked face. This is, this is me being ornery. Um, in terms of your strengths, I, I truly feel like one of your amazing spiritual gifts is encouragement. And really, uh, um, I'm going to couple that and call it like prayer encouragement. Like, you don't just say, how can I pray for you? Like, you truly draw out not only the prayer requests, but the, hey, let's pray about that right now. And I, to the point where I do believe that that's an actual gift that you've got. And so I know that that gift of yours is what got us into being prayer partners. And I think that if that hadn't happened, we wouldn't be doing the podcast. So I think that one of your major strengths is the, just the gift of encouragement coupled with prayer. Like I know you're amazing with keeping the, um, like the praying Christian women community going, responding to all the emails we get and just really, um, encouraging, you know, encouraging our community, I would say is such a huge, huge strength of yours. Um, but now I'm not going to share your weaknesses. I'm going to share mine. <laughs> so I actually want to hear, I, I would like to hear my weaknesses from your perspective too. But okay. Thank you Let for me think about words. that. That'll be, that'll be question part two. Okay. Um, I'd say my weakness is probably like my, uh, my shiny object syndrome brain where I'll get really, really, really excited about something for praying Christian women and be like, okay, let's do it. And then I'll be like, oh, by the way, I'm writing a novel for the next month. I'll see you in a month. <laughs> And and you're so patient and so kind. And I think that we both just sort of recognize, yeah, that's, that's the way Alana works. But I appreciate that you don't get um, whiplash from all the times I'm like, let's do this. Oh, never mind. Let's do that. Let's do that. I don't even see, I, I don't even see it that way. And you've yeah. seen it several times, but I, I don't really even see it that way. Um, but yeah, no, thank you for the the kind words. That was so nice. Well, you're moving right along. No, I'm just kidding. I I, I want to reciprocate the kind words. Got it. But tell me more. No, that's right. I would say, I I would say your strengths, definitely. You are, you're like, I would say the single most productive focused person that I know. And just not only visionary and like an ideas person. Cause I mean, you've got so mm-hmm. many ideas and so creative, but then the ability to implement them, the ability to like, just say, you know what, I have this idea for a, a book and I'm going to write it. Or I, you know, want to do this thing. And like, it's done before you even blink, you know, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I can hardly even relate to that because I'm so like in my own head and I think things over and I'm kind of like, well, and it becomes big in my mind, 
like way bigger than it really is to accomplish. And right, that, right. That gets in my way. So that's kind of in a way answering my own question about, you know, my, my weaknesses is mm-hmm. I think on the flip side, my, I am not super productive because I'm very easily distracted. Highly focused is the like opposite of me. I can be really focused on something like for a while, but I'm very easily distracted. And so, yeah, I would say that just that focus and that drive and then just your passion for different things and prayer. Mm -hmm. When we became prayer partners, just your, your passion for North Korea and just for the persecuted church and, you know, voice of the martyrs, um, you know, just, I remember, I think you were the one that, that pointed me to voice of the martyrs and mm, got me to look mm-hmm. into that. And, but yeah. just a very like passionate prayer life. And I think uh, in, in prayer terms, I feel like some of your strengths lie in just that, that passionate, like marathon prayer mm-hmm. type focus. And I love that. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely a challenge for me. Well, thank you. I would say, actually, if if I were to truly and honestly like call out your weakness on the air, Do it. I think it's I think it's that you're hard on yourself, you know. And well, and we've talked about this before, like you know, just negative self talk. Like even just now, like I'm really bad with managing my time. Like, well, you don't have to put it in those terms. You could say well, it. <laughs> well, and maybe that's part of the problem is that kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, you kind of have owns out. this. Yeah. Ah, yeah. No, and we've we've talked about that too, just about the the hang ups and the um what do you call them? Uh I can't I can't even blocks. Like, yeah, yeah. The, just the blocks. blocks yeah. yeah, in certain areas that I just I hear them coming out of myself all the time. I'm yeah. horrible with blocks. <laughs> I can't stack them. They always fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely that I, I could see that. I, I definitely changing the mentality of and the framework of how I even say the things that I struggle with could even mm-hmm, make mm-hmm. me better at the things that I think I'm not good at. I think it could, you know, like you could say, God is still working on me in my time management areas because I know that there's work that could be done, you know, mm-hmm. instead of I'm really bad with my time. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to say it about your kids, don't say it about yourself. Oh, I know. You would I never heard... call your children lazy, even if they were. <laughs> were you the one that, uh, well, remember I talked about having a short temper uh-huh. and kids all the time. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Worthless? No, I don't. I don't ever. Oh yeah, that's horrible. No. I'm just. I know. That's what is that the second like total no. party foul that I've had during this episode? So my question is, and I totally lost it. So keep going, and I'll think of it. It had to do oh. with you telling me weaknesses. Well, there was that. Were you going to talk about that video with the the oh. mom? I don't know. What I was going to say was that. Someone, it might have been you, was saying, if you wouldn't look at a picture of yourself mm-hmm. as a child, yeah. is that yeah. it? Yeah, and say it to that, yeah. That. Yeah. That did not come from me, but it came from a, a really um, hit you in the gut video by Truth Bomb Mom. She's, mm-hmm. she's got some really hard-hitting but very encouraging videos for moms. Yeah, and that was one of them. She invited friends over one by one. And she'd say, you know, what's the worst thing that you tell yourself about Mm -hmm. yourself? And so they'd say things like, you know, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm lazy, I can't keep up the house. And then she had found pictures of them when they were little girls. And so it would be like you you telling me I'm so lazy and I hold up a picture of five-year-old Jamie. I'm like, would you say that to this little girl? (laughs) It was very, yeah, really drove the point home for sure. Well, I, and this is just heartbreaking, my daughter and and my boys too, but my daughter has started to, like, I talk to myself sometimes, Mm -hmm. like, I'll just say, oh, why am I so stupid? And sometimes I don't think they're listening or Mm -hmm. I just say it, just, I'm not even thinking. So anyway, my daughter has started to, like, negative self-talk herself Mm, verbally. That's got to be hard to hear. Oh, because I hate it because it's her and, but I know where she got it. And Mm. so that has recently just been like really brought hardcore to my attention. I can't, 
I can't for her. Like if I wouldn't do it for me or for five-year-old me, I've got to do it for six-year-old her. You know, I've got to break that. Oh, habit. I love that. That's yes. That's yeah. a fabulous way to look at it. Well, and going back to motivational tendencies with you being the obliger who is always going to feel more motivated to do something for someone else's benefit. That's a really good, you know, Stopping yeah. your negative self-talk for yourself hasn't worked, but stopping it for your daughter, that's a driving, you know, that's a, that's a real reason. Yeah. Yeah. So to lighten it up, mm-hmm. what is the funniest moment that you remember from our time recording together? ho coast. ho coast. I forgot all about the ho coast. <laughs> that was funny. Was that me or you? Who, who that was me? you. You was said, me? I'm, I'm here with my ho coast. My ho-coast. And then you just burst out laughing. <laughs> And then the other one was when we were doing like a test um, or you were doing a test (laughs) intro and then the funny part was what the intro said, but then like, I think your oldest or maybe one of your kids heard the recording and just busted out laughing. Yeah. Do you still have a a copy of that? We should play it. We should like, I need to dig it out of my like almost lost computer data, but I have it. I have the drive still. So I forget what it was. Yeah. It was back when we were kind of coming up with things and we found, I think it was that we found the sample audio intro. Right. And so we're like, well, how does, how would the intro sound with this? And so I jumped on and I started all serious. I'm like, you're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. and Or the Prevailing and then, Prayer podcast. At yeah, the time. yeah. And, and what did I say? It was something about, was it about the boogeyman. vampires? The, the boogeyman. boogeyman. <laughs> That's right. And, but I, I, I did it just to be fun. I'm like, here you go, Jamie. And I didn't tell you it was a joke. And yeah, that was fun. Yeah. And then another one is we were doing the blessing and benediction one time. And it was one of those things where we had just done a lot of recordings that day, I think. And I was just Mm -hmm. kind of punch, punch, crazy, punchy, whatever. Um, And it was the blessing, (laughs) the blessing. It was not even that funny. I'm laughing now. The blessing was really long. And then the benediction was like (laughs) three words. And (laughs) I was like, and our benediction is... I couldn't stop laughing and I think I had to re-record it like several times. Uh-huh. Anyway, that just silly stuff like that. But we have fun doing We do. Our- we do. I think the first one that came to my mind was that fake intro. That the was fake pretty intro. Fun. And then and yeah. We used to keep a blooper reel. We uh That's we right. did not keep that up, but oh, I remember something funny we used to do. I think maybe we're just not as concerned about how the videos turn out anymore, but we used to be very cautious about getting like the video onto the right person. And so we'd always do like the la 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 so that like it would trigger for the video to be on you. Um, I remember doing that. That's right. Funny noises. (laughs) Yeah. For those that don't know, like with Zoom, if you're talking, it shifts over to you, the speaker. But if you're, it's sometimes there's a lag. And so Mm -hmm. like if we're, before we start recording, like Alana usually does the intro. So she would be like, let me get it on me. La, 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 la. And (laughs) (laughs) And now we're like, oh, who cares? (laughs) That's funny. I hadn't thought about that either. I know it's been a while. You know, fun fact, we've been on Zoom before, like everybody knew what Zoom was. I know. I almost felt a little smug about that. Me when... too. We were on Zoom before the quarantine drove everybody to be on Zoom. <laughs> like years and years before. I know, like years. Back yeah. in my day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Back before you needed a password and That's there was right. no waiting room. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, another thing about the podcast. So uh, one of the questions that I had was that some people have asked is like, what is, what, does it take to do a podcast? What goes into it? And so, I mean, it's actually way easier than I ever dreamed that it would be. But one of the things is that's different from the beginning and now is I usually do the editing of the podcast. If there are any edits that need to be done, which for the most part, we just get on, we record. We used to be so particular though, or I would get started on something, especially with our prayer adventure stories, because I'm not Uh a good storyteller. And I'd say, oh, that was silly. You wouldn't say that to your daughter. I did it again. (laughs) All right. But yeah, so I would go, you know, I would stop the recording. And so I would have to go back and clip that part out. But what I used to do, I would clip out all of our ums and all of our breaths and all of the, when Uh we would get ready to say something would be like, 
and there would be like a smacking. Oh, right. The something. smacking. Yes. Now you guys get to hear all of our smacks and our um. And they and know our, you guys know we're alive because you hear us breathing. That's right. <laughs> we're not. We're not cyborgs after all. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's gotten. It's. It's gotten. We. We just have a pretty easy rhythm. Um. 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 um now I'm all self conscious about saying it. I, it took a while for us to figure out just being comfortable talking into the microphone. That took some time getting comfortable with. It took us a little bit of time just figuring out all the edits and realizing, you know, we don't need to be crazy formal about all of this. And now that we're just kind of showing up and doing it, it's it's really not hard. What Jamie does is she comes up with the basic outline. So we get on Zoom and we both pull up this sheet that's got basically the whole outline for the show. She's put in the verse of the day, you know, all of these things. Sometimes I come up with the just for fun questions because I like putting Jamie on the spot because <laughs> she hates it. Other times she puts them in. better. I, I don't mind them as much them. now. Yeah. Um, and then we just kind of just show up and, and chat about it. And then when it's done, Jamie's the one who kind of takes the videos, puts those on YouTube, takes the audio, puts it into um, Anchor, which is where we're hosting our show now. And it's kind of, we just sort of have a streamlined way of doing it and it just sort of happens. Yeah. And I feel like the quality of the content has become more our focus now than making it perfect. I think we realize that mm -hmm. when we listen to podcasts, we're not, you know, if somebody stutters over a word or doesn't yeah. sound super professional and, you know, mm -hmm. news anchor worthy, mm -hmm. it's right. not, that's not the point. We try to you know, just address things in a way that's, you know, yeah, whatever. Yes. So I would say the work came in just realizing that we didn't have to be really, really, really formal about things. Yeah. All righty. I think it's my turn, right? It is. Okay. What is something that we cannot stand about each other? Which, mm. like, it doesn't exist, but a pet peeve. A pet, pet peeve. peeve. Okay. I'm or something that's totally endearingly good. annoying about me. <laughs> we can, we'll can. we just keep finding nicer and nicer ways to put it. <laughs> I, oh, man. I can't even. I mean, I would have to project onto what you have said so many times about how mm -hmm. you have so many ideas and... But I, but that doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> like I love okay. your ideas, and I it never bothers feel me because like I have for every like ten ideas I've got, like I follow through on one or two of them. Right. So what you see, people, is only the tip of a huge <laughs> iceberg. <laughs> the number, I mean, people don't know. Probably not everyone that listens here knows that you have multiple other podcasts. You mm -hmm. are a, you mm -hmm. know, award-winning. Oh, now, oh, oh, I need to announce this. Oh, are you going to embarrass me? <laughs> You are now, you are now, okay, so Alana was already a USA Today, is that right? Yes. You were yes. already a USA Today best-selling author based on yes. a boxed set mm -hmm. that had been sold where you were an author among several that that set mm -hmm. became best-selling, which is mm -hmm. absolutely legit, yet recently Alana became an individually USA Today bestselling author. That is so exciting. I haven't told you congratulations yet, but congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Well, my husband was really mad at me because he's the one who posted it on Facebook. I, I, saw. Mean, I was excited that it happened, but I wasn't going to, you know, throw it out there. I mean, I was super excited. It happened, super thankful. And then my husband was like, you didn't tell anybody. And so he posted on Facebook Good. and then, and then he got mad at me. He's like, even Jamie didn't know. I did it. I was shocked. And I thought, oh my goodness. But you know what? Lately you've had a lot of irons in the fire. And so we yeah. haven't gone, you know, there, it, yeah. there was a, there are times and ebbs and flows where I would know, and we, I would know True. that was coming oh, up, sure. yeah. but recently there's just been so much going on. I feel like we haven't had a lot of time to connect yeah. or on the, like, Hey, what are the, what is the list of stuff oh, that's for going sure. on? Yeah. Well, I would say like, Across the last two years, probably 50% of our talk is on the air and 50% is off the air. But I would right. say in the past three months, yeah. it's been like 90%. 
on the on air. the air, yeah, yeah, which is crazy. And that includes, you know, me coming to visit you and you coming to visit me. Like we just yeah. haven't had as much just you and me time. So our listeners will get a kick out of this. Sometimes Jamie and I will be like the parents who go on a date and agree not to talk about the kids. <laughs> and we'll be like, let's let's just have what do I call it? Um, uh, what a something business, chat, business chat, or a um, personal chat. No, there's a word for it, like a non a non work chat, non podcast chat. I forget what I call it. Probably like a non business chat or something. You want to have a non business chat? Yeah, <laughs> just to catch up. You know, we just haven't like done that in a up. while. Yeah, I know. And yeah, no, those have definitely waned. And I feel like as we get back into like the new life is normal, mm-hmm. it'll probably become more once there's more of a feeling. Yep. Between. Well, and also, you know, like I need my Jamie fix at least once a week. And when we used to do like a whole month's worth of episodes at once, that left us three other weeks where I needed, you know, I needed to talk to you about things. But now, like, I don't think, I think we maybe the longest we've gone is maybe a week and a half. Yeah, um, and that even uh, seems not recording. Yeah. yeah. And so it almost feels like we, ha- we haven't gotten to the point where I am depleted. We know people are learning so much about us. We both know that we're missing each other when we show up in each other's dreams. Right. Didn't that happen? Like the same Over was, Christmas, on vacation yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. And we were like, Hey, I had a dream about you also. Yeah. Our subconscious, like you haven't talked to her in, you know, in a week, it's probably like once we get about 10 days and I'm like, I need to have my Jamie fix. Yeah. <laughs> or I go to my phone to call you and my, and you're not on my recent calls. I have to, that's scroll. right. You got to scroll down. Then, you then know, know, there's it's a problem. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, going back to pet peeves, um, I think it's endearingly adorable how you always apologize for everything, even Ugh. when there's nothing to apologize for. <laughs> okay. My daughter does that too. Does and, and that, and I keep telling her, stop apologizing. I feel like, um, what's the book girl stop apologizing the oh that's right right. Rachel Hollis wrote that book (laughs) you need to tattoo that on your forehead right well I say it to my daughter I'm like girl stop apologizing and then wait (laughs) is that trademarked am I allowed to say that that's right that's right (laughs) no like it'll be something like you'll call the very first words out of your head is sorry what are you sorry for Just whatever. It's a blanket. Sorry. (laughs) It is a blanket. Sorry. It doesn't bother me. I just think it's kind of, it's adorably endearing. (laughs) And so you. (laughs) Yeah. I'll fix that. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) And then you'll, and then you'll say sorry for saying sorry. And I'm like, no, really, it's okay. And like, no, I really am sorry. And then I'm just, and then I just, you know, slap you and say, girl, stop apologizing. (laughs) (laughs) Right. With the book, girl, stop apologizing. All right. Well, one of our, uh, I think one of the questions I had that kind of goes into what we were talking about, what we do besides the Praying Christian Women podcast. That is fun because yeah, we don't talk about that as much. No. And so like for you, we, we went through some of the things you have several other podcasts, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I've got the unabridged Christian fiction audiobook podcast. And that's basically where I just take my audiobooks and put them up as podcast episodes. So I think now you you have up to like four or five of my Christian fiction novels. They're all up. Jamie and I do after shows together. And so she'll read the book and then we'll like chat about the book from like the reader perspective and the author perspective. So that's really fun. That is fun. We've got the Mindful Christian Prayers podcast, and that's more like short guided prayer routines is what I call them. So instead of like, dear God, please help Alaska, it's, you know, and now let's take a minute to pray for your state or nation, you know, and then some pause there. So we've got that. And then I've got a podcast for authors. Uh, What is that? The Successful Writer Podcast. So that's kind of the iron that's most um, heavily been in the fire lately. I've been doing more like trainings for other authors and things like that, which has been really, really fun. So those are, those are some of the things that I do outside of this. Plus you homeschool your kids. Mm -hmm. Yep. We homeschool. I take long walks with the dogs. (laughs) I take long walks on the beach. (laughs) (laughs) Not the beach. There's too many moose. Long walks on the tundra. 
<laughs> yeah. In the woods. You get eaten alive by mosquitoes. <laughs> oh, they've been bad. Yes. All right. So what about you? You, uh, you brew, you don't, you don't even brew your own coffee. What do you do? You roast your well, own coffee. I think it's I roast custom. my own coffee, but to be, to be totally honest, I haven't roasted my own coffee since last summer because in the winter uh, I need to vent it really well. And so the garage has to be open. So when it got really cold, I just stopped and I haven't gotten back. I've been getting my coffee from Costco, but I ran out today. So I was just thinking I need to roast more coffee. Fun. I have a little roaster and I love it. I love it. Ra roast small batches of coffee and it's really good. You can totally tell the difference from mm -hmm. even really fresh store-bought coffee. Like it's just so good. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Um, I have three kids and they're all involved in hockey in some capacity. So that's- You're a hockey mom. I am a hockey mom. In every sense know. of the word. Yeah. You guys yeah. are definitely, that's a, yeah, it's a big part of your family. I would say we are officially a hockey family. Oh and, yeah. <laughs> There's no question. <laughs> and, um, I do write for Candidly Christian, which is mm -hmm. a Christian blog ministry, whatever you want to call it. Um, Heather Hart runs that ministry with Valerie Reese and it's, um, I just do like, you know, monthly posts for them, but I like being involved with them. They're really encouraging. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's really it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do anything else. <laughs> I don't do anything else. No, that's that's the majority of it. I think right now, lately, I have definitely been kind of involved with home repairs. We had our post oh yeah repairs done, so mm -hmm. that has that has been a big chunk of my identity is just ongoing yeah. home stuff, which is starting. There's starting to be an end in sight, and and just you know. Um, there are a couple of books that I definitely would like to write at some point. A couple. What do you think you know, your next ideas. book is going to be? Well, my next devotional. So I really want to do a devotional, like a mm -hmm. like just um, like a prayer, thirty days of prayer, maybe for mm -hmm. racial healing. That's been something yeah. I've been wanting to do since we had. It was even before we had Dorina Williamson on the podcast talking about bridge builders. And that was like last year sometime. Mm -hmm. And I never did that. And I had an outline and, you know, it's one of my many like, wow, that's so big. I can't do that now. So um, that might be on, that would definitely be relevant right now. Mm -hmm. so something like that. Um, there's the book, um, the, the home stuff management book that, that was something mm -hmm. that I might, mm -hmm. um, Honestly, I really, I have a nonfiction book idea. It's, it's my sci-fi novel that I've had in my head for like a decade. And I would love to write that sometime. It has like, I've still don't have all of the themes worked out or whether it'd be like overtly Christian or if it would just mm -hmm. be. Um, but as far as my next book, I, I don't know. That's something I really uh -huh. want to go into just asking God what what um i would say i'd like to do the prayer the prayer devotional but as far as book book i feel like i need to ask god for that and see cuz i mm -hmm. do think that writing is something i haven't spent as much time doing and i yeah. love writing and i know that there's stuff you know whether it's for praying christian women or just on the side for mhm mm mhm mm jamie hampton <laughs> i know her <laughs> yeah so i don't know yeah, no, it's it's always fun. Like I I I know all the hats you wear or most of the hats you wear, but yeah, most people probably just know us as those prayer podcast ladies. Yeah. <laughs> What's a hobby you've got that people don't know about? Um I would say one of my hobbies is painting. I like oh, really? paint. I do. I, I don't like think I knew that even. Yeah. I haven't painted in a long time, but, um, but I had done a couple like that were inspired from my safari in Africa when I went to Kenya. Um, mm -hmm. and I went on a safari, but be on between Kenya and Tanzania. And so I had some pictures from that safari and I had done some paintings based on that. Like I did a giraffe and I did an acacia tree. And, um, so, and then, I don't know. I did some other mountain landscapes and it was so calming and I loved it. It was something my husband That's actually cool. got me like this easel and some oil paints and acrylic paints. So that is definitely something that I don't know if I would call it a hobby hobby. 
but it's something that I really do like doing. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's painting is fun. one. What about you? Um, I'm, I'm so happy like growing my house plants. It's a new ish hobby that I've gotten into just like in the past year, I think it was last summer. And that's been really, really fun. So I would say that, and then, you know, like Scott and I are taking even longer walks now. So I don't even know what you would call that. Um, what I think would be super, super fun is to actually do like one of those walking tours, you know, where you're doing like 12 or 15 miles a day kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I could actually see going into something like that. That would be really fun. Or even like a walking, like, um, you know, one of the, whatever the 5k, 10k. Marathons. Marathon, yeah. Marathon, yep. Where they're mm -hmm. like neat scenic areas. That would be pretty cool. Even if you were. It would be cool. Like I would, I, I would never ever run a mar or run a marathon. I would never even want to run a like 3k, but I could, I could see signing up for like a walking marathon. What's that? Yeah. Like 23 miles or so. I think so. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think right now I could probably like whip out nine or 10 miles and just be a little bit tired at the end. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely like, it would be a stretch to double that and then some, but I could see that being a, a pretty cool goal. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would say fishing is something that is a new hobby. I've pretty much always hung out with the kids while my husband went fishing. But last uh -huh. year when we went to the Russian river, I actually got, you know, I bought myself waders at Costco. Uh -huh. And I got oh, uh -huh. it and I loved it. I like, I loved fishing. Oh. I loved filleting the fish and learning how to do it, you know, to get the bones so that they don't, you know, hmm. we're getting, it was fun. And we were there for three days. I mean, it wasn't a big long trip, but I felt like I could live like this. Like I could totally yeah. live like going to the river and fishing and then, mm -hmm. you know, then cooking it up and having fish. Yeah. Yeah, cooking yeah. fish. yeah. So I would say fishing is a new hobby and interesting. So yeah, we get to go Monday. So that'll be fun to go catch some salmon. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's, oh, I did have one more question. Do you have another one or should we do yeah. my last? Cause I'm going to have to go soon. Yeah. We'll do your last one. Okay. If we were starting the podcast over, like brand new today, episode one of Praying Christian Woman, can you think of anything you would do differently? Hmm. Differently from what we're doing now or how we mm -hmm. started before? Oh, either, I guess. Yeah, either. Yeah. If I could look back on the very first, you know, uh -huh. if, if I could look at the me that started at Prevailing Prayer, you know, yeah. I, I think I would say I would definitely... Um, tell myself to loosen up and just mm -hmm. be yourself and not feel like it has to be perfect. Um, I yeah. feel like we've gotten more to that now where I, I'm, I don't feel as uptight, mm -hmm. but um, hmm, would I do anything different? Wow. I don't know. That's a hard question. Maybe if I hear your answer, I'll be able to answer better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm really happy with how it's going. I love showing up and doing this with you. So really, you know, I mean, there are some behind the scenes things like we don't put a ton of energy into the website and things like that. Oh, I was just so, about to say that. Yes, I would engagement with the Facebook group is something that I definitely like I would want to I, I want to mm -hmm. do more of that personally, like the, um, mm -hmm. the Frank Christian women community and like you yeah. said, the website design and stuff. Yeah, like if we had someone who just spent a couple hours a week just keeping up with some of that behind the scenes that neither you nor I, I mean, we both could do, but it's just, it's not top priority right now. That could be kind of cool. Um, yeah, and, and then just more engagement type things, you know, mm -hmm. I think would be neat. We've done a couple like online prayer retreats. You're doing the Take 10 Tuesday. So maybe even like building more of those things regularly into the thread of what we do could be cool. Yeah, because I do like sometimes writing in a vacuum, you know, writing the devotionals or mm -hmm. writing a blog post or an email yeah. isn't the same as having that one-on-one -on -one engagement. And having direct so, feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Which I do really love. And yeah. Awesome. All righty. Well, I need to go get dinner. This is running Ooh. way later than what we normally do. We but it's are been really fun. Um, alrighty. Well, somebody 
I won't say, you know, which Jamie I'm talking about was not able to give us a new blessing and benediction. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to recycle last week's blessing and benediction. Jamie, I have told you time and time again, this is my number one pet peeve. You need to apologize. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> All right. Here is your blessing, which may sound quite familiar to you, but that's totally okay. I hope everybody knows I'm joking. And Jamie, I love all the work you do behind the scenes to get these outlines <laughs> up. Well, at least I know you're joking. So that's Good. the only thing that matters. That's what matters. <laughs> yeah, right. The little bit of tension might actually like increase our viewership. That's right. We can Drama. do like, you know how pay-per-view they have those like fighter matches that they really <laughs> build up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. May God open doors and ministry to you today so that you may proclaim the word of the Lord courageously and effectively. May your speech always be seasoned with grace so that you may know how to answer anyone who asks about the great salvation you've been granted through Christ. May God use you today to open eyes that are blind, to proclaim freedom to captives. May you never be ashamed of the gospel, but instead proclaim it boldly to those who need to hear. And our benediction. <laughs> See, I'm going to do oh, the no, benediction do again. again. <laughs> May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. Psalm 134.3. That was, that was really funny, actually. It that was, was hilarious. <laughs> no. God bless you for listening, all of you listeners, and until next time. Amen.